In 2019, I was the lead author for a publication in JAMA Oncology focusing on progression patterns from monoclonal gammopathy or MGUS into multiple myeloma. We led a study, or I led a study in 2009, and we published in the Blood Journal the study showing that patients with myeloma always had a preceding monoclonal gammopathy. So that linked the MGUS to myeloma. But in this new study, we took one step further uh, into the details. And what we did was that we uh, show that patients who go from monoclonal gammopathy into myeloma compared to a group of patients who have the monoclonal gammopathy without progression but with very long follow-up with serial samples that you see that the markers uh, of disease uh, which in this case is the monoclonal proteins as well as the light chains that you can see changes over time in the patients who develop myeloma, which you don't see in the other patients who stay as monoclonal gammopathy or MGUS. You also see that there are decreases of the unevolved immunoglobulins, uh, probably indicative of uh, some form of a drop in the host immunity. So there's loss in the uh, function of the normal immune system, and there is increase in the activity of the precursor cells that leads to myeloma. I think there are multiple important clinical implications of this study. To me, it really changed my whole perception of what's referred to as standard risk or low risk or high risk uh, uh, monoclonal gammopathy. Uh, what we see is that patients who show up with high risk and have a higher risk of developing myeloma, at the preceding time point, they all had intermediate and they also had low risk. And I think it makes sense when you see the data. Of course, high risk probably doesn't come right out of the blue. It, it makes sense that it's uh, preceded by earlier stages of intermediate and low risk. So the clinical implication of this is that if you have a patient uh, who's followed from monoclonal gammopathy, even if you determine the risk as low risk today, you need to do an annual evaluation and you need to make sure that that risk stays the same. If you see that there are changes over time, what this study shows is that the progression pattern could go anything from one year up to five years uh, from, from the last blood test. So you need to stay on top of it and you need to continue monitoring the patients. Lastly, what the study showed uh, when it comes to the intermediate uh, condition referred to as smoldering myeloma is that the patients that have monoclonal gammopathy, uh, not all of them go through a stage of monoclonal uh, smoldering myeloma. We always said that MGUS goes through smoldering myeloma and then myeloma. But this study shows that only around 20% of the patients based on blood tests actually fulfill the definition of smoldering myeloma. And I think that's very, very important clinically because many physicians probably follow the patients and they uh, are waiting to make sure that there is no uh, evolution of smoldering myeloma. But if you only rely on the blood test, uh, four in five patients will not uh, pass the threshold of three grams per deciliter. So the only way of probably pick, uh, picking that up would be to do a bone marrow biopsy, and that's typically not done on an annual basis. So I think the whole study message is that it really questions this so-called smoldering myeloma diagnosis, if that really is relevant, or that should just simply be early myeloma, uh, or a, a, a kind of a high-risk precursor disease that should be monitored more closely. But this is to be continued, and we are working using genomic markers, trying to better understand what's going on, both in the plasma cells and in the microenvironment, to better understand uh, the underlying process of these findings. I do think that uh, physicians uh, are impacted by the results just right now, because we show that uh, patients with low risk may convert into intermediate and to high risk. So the risk is not uh, written in stone for any given patient. I think. Before this study was done, we thought that patients should be labeled as low-risk patients or high-risk or intermediate-risk patients. But this study shows that the risk really can change over time. It can unfortunately only go worse. But it can also stay low-risk uh, indefinitely. But that needs to be proven. So therefore, the implication is that blood tests every year with a reassessment of the individual patient's risk, that's really the way to go. And I think you could be also controversial and think about it and say, uh, does this also potentially, over time, uh, wipe out the so-called uh, undetermined significance? Because for many years we have not really been able to say who is going to progress and who is not going to progress. But I think if you drill into the details of this study, you now actually can see in the progressors there are changes, there are patterns of change of these markers. 
So you could argue that this is the monoclonal gammopathy of progression into myeloma versus the monoclonal gammopathy, which seems to be a just a benign condition. So assuming that you keep on seeing this every year, if you reassess your patient, uh, maybe that's what it is. But these are just linguistic details, and I'm not pretending uh, that this is the way to do it. So I'm not going to change that today, but I think this is uh, food for thought.